In this day and age, we find ourselves at somewhat of an odd state of being, where we are between turning away from our old traditional cultures and being on the precipice of a new and developing culture that's shaping itself in real time. For females, this can be difficult on the back end. For males, however, the difficulty presents itself on the front end, mostly seeing as how our burden of performance necessitates us to rise to the occasion to be considered worthy of being men. My question is this, how can a male hope to stand as a man without the guidance of cultures and religions? A sentiment that I have expressed to my clients and my audience on multiple occasions is this. A girl is initiated into being a woman by nature. A male is initiated into being a man by other men. I'll be honest, as far as sentiments go, this one isn't necessarily based in nuts and bolts reason. To be fair, it's a platitude that you can find many exceptions to throughout various traditional cultures and religions. I bring this up today because I find it difficult to suggest the idea of womanhood or manhood outside of the guidance and structure of traditional cultures and religions. More especially, seeing how the suffix hood suggests an implicit communal aspect. In the past, traditional cultures not only made boys into men for the selection of the women and the utilization of the community, but it also gave the men a guide on how to be for a functional life within the bounds of that specific civilization. A philosophy on how to live, if you will. In our current state, there has been a large exodus from those old complementary roles provided by culture. Said differently, the old order social contracts have dissolved. But that doesn't stop people from having sex, making babies, and attempting to establish families. What these cultures and religions provided us was a philosophy on life and how to live it. Our world has changed very much in its appearance. However, there remains the possibility to take hold of the underlying consistencies in life and your life. And with those, build a philosophy that serves you to your own ends for the life that you choose to live. To be frank, you do not need to build a philosophy for your life around women and children. You don't need to build it around the expectations or requirements of anyone else. Why? Because you will be the only one who is expected and obligated to live that life. There are many strings for you to grasp at here, many points for you to start from. However, I'll give you a very simple one. It need not be the end all be all of everything, but it's a starting point. Your own happiness. I have three principles when it comes to masculine medicine. The third of these principles, just like the others, is broken into both a practice and a theory side of the principle. The theory side of that third principle, and don't forget it, is this. This is your life. If you are going to undertake the task of making a philosophy for your life, you need to learn to make yourself your own mental point of origin and reasoning. Is that selfish? Hell the fuck yeah it is. That, however, is the point. This is not something for anyone but you to live by. This is your life. Of course, happiness is not the end all be all of life, and I am not attempting to suggest that it is. This is your life. That is what is at stake here. What I am suggesting is that the cultivation of your happiness in your own life is your obligation and yours alone. Without you cultivating it in your own existence by your own hand, you cannot expect it to be there at all. Happiness, just like a crop of vegetables, will not be there every minute of every day and if it was, there would be no value to it. That's exactly why happiness in your life is valuable, not only because it's extremely perishable, but because everyone wants it in their life. This is your life, and if there is going to be any of it in your life, it will not come 
from having a woman or children. It will not come from making money or making anyone else happy at your own expense. Yes, you may stumble upon a random patch of happiness every now and then, but that doesn't ensure its continual and perpetuated existence in your life. You are what ensures that. All of this will only manifest itself properly when you make yourself your own mental point of origin. Just like on an airplane, when they show you those creepy images of what you're supposed to do when the plane is going down, you have to put on your mask first. This is why I won't even suggest that you cultivate happiness for the purpose of others. Even if you do decide to ration some of the happiness in your life out to others, if you do not plant the seeds of it for yourself first, you will have none to ration to yourself. This is your life. And you will be the one who has to live by the philosophy that you build for yourself. If the premises of that philosophy does not include your own happiness and the cultivation of that, you cannot expect it in your life. Not simply the feeling of happiness, but examining what makes you happy and why the practice side to the principle that I mentioned earlier is this be righteously honest me personally I make an attempt to be as honest as I can with most certainly myself but other people mostly because I'd rather not take that energy to cultivate and nurture a lie it's a lot of work and I've already got plenty on my plate additionally if I were to have a lie as the basis for my motivations, I would not be effectively righteous in the things that I do. My righteousness would eventually falter right along with the philosophy that I'm using to base my life on. That is not an option. Unless, of course, you make it one. Far too many people today live a lie. What they say resonates with them is what's best to facilitate the perpetuation of their lie. Stuff to decorate their lie and make it more palatable for them to live with it. If your life is based upon a lie, it's not because of any society or outside force that is cultivating that lie. It is you. You are the one cutting corners on what you see as truth. Not simply with other people, but with yourself first and most of all. A lie is a shoddy foundation for a structure that you use to create integrity in your life. Integrity to substantiate the reasoning behind your actions. If you cultivate lies, they will grow to consume that happiness that you do have and cultivate. Maybe not right away, but it's inevitable. You need to set yourself up for success. You want to be moving based on your ration and not off of the momentum of emotional reactions. If you do not know something, be honest with yourself and admit that. That way you can begin to know and not simply put your energy into feeling like or looking like you know, which is ultimately a farce. If you are wrong, embrace it. That way you can begin learning to be correct, cutting corners will only shortchange yourself, regardless of where you attempt to discharge that culpability to make yourself feel good. As they say, stand on your square and rule your life from there. We have to become reacquainted with our own happiness and take an honest and deep look at ourselves. From there, it is the responsibility of every male to construct and maintain a philosophy for themselves and about themselves. This is what can stand in the stead of the cultures and religions that no longer give us the guidance that it once did. And also, in case you are wondering, I have constructed and continue to work on my own philosophy for myself in life. Have you ever taken some time to look up what the word husbandry means? It may not be what you think. I will, however, most certainly, talk more extensively about this philosophy in a different segment. I call it happiness through husbandry. For now, go find a dictionary and look up what husbandry means.